Hi guys, this is Noora from Capit Simplify. Today I am here to interpret an intraoral periapical radiograph for you guys. So let's begin. Okay, so as usual, we're gonna go ahead with a step-by-step -step interpretation of this radiograph. The first step is to identify the type of the radiograph. So this is an intraoral periapical radiograph or an IOPA. This is an intraoral periapical radiograph of the maxillary right quadrant. I know this because I look at this radiograph like I'm looking at a patient. So that's my first step. My second step is to identify what are the teeth that are present in this region. So I see number eight, number seven, and a part of number six. My next step is to pick up the tooth of interest. In this particular radiograph, it looks like both number seven and number eight are the teeth of interest. After I've identified the teeth of interest, my next step is to describe the crown and root with respect to these teeth of interest. So the crown of number eight has a radial lucent area, which is well-defined, but it's also surrounded by a radio opaque line. This radio opaque line could be suggestive of a liner or a base and this radial lucent area could be suggestive of either a dislodged restoration because of the shape of this radial lucency or it also could be suggestive of a composite restoration that is radial lucent. We all know that composite materials are radio opaque only because we add barium to it so that it's radio opaque in, in the radiographs. This could be an old material that does not have that radio opaque material. Next, we move on to the root part. So the root of this tooth looks normal. The, the pulp canal space seems to be normal as well. Um, the periodontal ligament space is not widened. Uh, the, the bone surrounding this tooth also looks normal with the trabecular pattern. There's no radiolucent area or radiopaque area in the periapical uh, part of this tooth. Although I do see that the interradicular bone has receded, there is some horizontal bone loss in this patient between all the teeth that's for, uh, radiographed in this particular area, number seven, number eight, and number six. Next, we move on to number seven, which also has a well-defined radiolucency in the crown part of the area. Again, we see a radio opaque line, which could be suggestive of a liner or a base. And this radiolucent area could be suggestive of a dislodged restoration or a radiolucent restorative material, maybe composite. And then we see that the pulp canal space looks normal. Uh, the pedial is not widened, the periapical area is normal as well, the trabecular pattern looks good, and again we see interradicular bone loss um, with respect to number 7. We have only a part of number 6 over here, um, the epical area seems to be cut off and we don't, we don't have the distal aspect of this tooth. But with what we have in this radiograph, I can see that this tooth has a coronal restoration uh, because of the appearance with a radio opacity in the center surrounded by a radial lucent area, this could be suggestive of a PFM crown. But it, it does not seem to have undergone any endodontic therapy because the pulp canal space is patent and looks normal. The pedial space is not widened. I cannot comment on the periapical area because we don't see very clearly in this particular radiograph. So once I've done this, my next step is to comment about any normal anatomical landmarks that could have, that, that might be present. I actually don't see any normal anatomical landmarks in this radiograph, although there is a small line over here, which could be the floor of the maxillary sinus, but it's very subtle. Um, so this is how I would interpret an intraoral periapical radiograph. So as you see, as you saw, I went step by step and that's the way you interpret it. I hope that helped. Thank you.